<laughs> and you let me out, guys. Um, before I show you this, I said I'd wear it tonight, Ian. Ian um, Braddock sent this one in. Sent me a cat. I had a parcel last week, and um, I thought, bloody hell, what's this coming through the post? I didn't even expect it. Sent me a cat, he sent me all these paints back here. Five cans, different shades of um, spray paints. Um, he's also sent me a, a matchbox cement mixer. And I've got a tractor unit and a trailer as well I've got to do. But I'm waiting for bits at the moment, tires and stuff. But that will come next year on the video. I know it's matchbox, it's not corgi, but never mind. It's still a model, isn't it? Um, and he also sent some cloths. I've got a couple of cloths here. Um, and he sent me a lovely roll. Lovely roll, a nice masking tape. Real wide stuff. It's just like the old town, you know. Sort of, same sort of texture as that. So that'll be ideal. That I shall um, well get into using that. And some white tack as well. He said it's pretty good for getting stuff off, you know, cleaning screens and stuff like that. So thanks again for that, Ian. Oh, I had a nice car as well. It's indoors. I should have pulled it out really chilly lot. But thanks, thanks for that, Ian. I really appreciate. It. I know I thanked you on the email, but thanks again. Um. Anyway, here we go. It's um. Yeah, time again. <laughs> So let's get on with it. Um, great comments. I'll start with great comments from numerous amounts of um, subscribers here. A lot of usual names as well. John Moore, Keith Edmonds, Steve Deer, Stephen Deer, or I should say, Muddy Fox 4x4, Greg Spinks, Peter Durnian, Kenny Batchus, I think that's how it's mentioned, I'm not sure. No doubt you'll correct me. Um, Lotto Fergie, James Smith, Graham Mamari. Metal Guru 01, Francis Palmer, Eamon Haddon, Tommy Flying Hat, and I've also got a nice hug from Argentina from a guy called Omar Oliveira, Eduardo Oliveira. Sent me a hug from, all the way from Argentina. Thanks very much, Omar. Anyway, the, um, comments here again. I love all, you know, I love all your sort of um, feedback, really, because it, you know, it puts me straight and I know what to do, like, you know. If I'm doing something wrong, I'd rather you not have told me about it and, and not say anything. It's better to know. Um, Paddy O'Brien. Um, keep up with the great vids. Don't mind the talking at all. Because the end result of the video is a great restore. Thanks, Paddy. Um, Tis best in diecast. Good chat. And that fella. A superb customer of the Bill Nort. Great colour. Pimp to the max. Ready to cruise. Top job, fella. Thanks a lot, mate. Um, Paul Robinson from Neighbours again. <laughs> Great job, Bob. Like the choice of colours. Keep up the good work. Uh, Constantino Rizzi. Nice job, Bob. Like your like your version way better. You have captured the 50s Americana in this stooge baker. Uh, Jeff Reck. Uh, Great choice in colour. Excellent work. Yeah. Chris Smith. He, this chap, Chris Smith, he works with the um, uncle. Down Plymouth, apparently. Um, beautiful job. Colours really capture the car. The era of the car and the white walls set it off well. Well done again, Bob. Thanks, Chris. Hope you get on all right with my uncle there working away. <laughs> Busy doing your painting, painting walls or whatever you're doing. Uh, Steve Wilson, Bob, I'm hooked. You have a great channel here, mate. I'm thoroughly enjoying your banter and restorations. Uh, only found your channel a little while ago, so I've been busy catching up on previous episodes. Big thumbs up to you for the content and your easygoing attitude. Thanks very much. Keep watching, Steve. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm glad you found my channel. Um, Robert Sterling. I bought, well, I couldn't believe it when I saw this week's video was a Studebaker Hawk. I owned a real 61 Hawk. But his didn't have the wings on the back, apparently. It must have been a later one, I suppose. They was, they was cut off. And it was solid red. Then he then he heard I was doing an Eagle Transport or something. Yeah, I, I did say back on, on the other video tonight, I said on the old comments I was going to do one, but it won't be till next year, actually, folks. Because, I, you know, I've got a few cards here, I'm just going to try and do a few easy ones up to Christmas, like, you know, just to filter it out a bit now and then. And then I'll start taking on a few bigger ones then. Because um, the, the old Eagle Transport is quite a few bits involved with that, like, you know, there's a lot of messing around with that one. Uh, Robert Sterling. Oh yeah, that's, I've just, I just done that. <laughs> Sorry. David Legault. Um, I think that's a pronounce your name. I hit 101 likes. 314 Ferrari, please. 
don't worry, David. It, it's coming up very shortly. I have. I did say I have one here, and I'll show you because he, he's on about the pins or something. He's saying that the rivet pelts are too thin. They're not the end ones in too thin, but there's two on there that are. But don't worry, you don't have to worry about them. Scott from Opal um, Diecast Restorations. A uh, beautiful paint job on that gold nought bolt. Surprised that the colour I went for, and how great it turned out. Have a good weekend, brother. You too, Scott. I will get around to doing a couple of your cars sometime. I, you, you got a Land Rover you sent me, and um, was well, a Wizbo's Land Rover, and um, the old Jag, in it. I, I have done a Jag previous, but I will do this one. I'll let you see how it comes out. Um, Sierra's Playhouse. Really like your channel. Keep up the vids. Enjoy watching them. Good bag of chips and a coke, and I'm set. <laughs> you work wonders with the spray cans. Well, they're better, aren't they? They're better than the old bloody airbrushes. Uh, Paul Power. Thank you. I'm going to nip down the boot cells for some lights. Lights? I don't know what he's on about there. Christmas lights? I don't know. Hee hee. Yes, Bob, you have got me out of here, and I have got my hands on the red safari to do that. Well, I hope you can send me a picture, Paul, when you've done that. We'll put it on um, YouTube. Another cup of tea and some biscuits. Lovely. Five star channel. Martin Dare. Oh, Martin. You take a look at Martin's channel. I'll tell you what. Talk about me yapping. You want to watch him? He, he don't stop. He can talk for England. Unbelievable. <laughs> Great job, Pop. Looks great in the two tone. Sounds like the boys are putting on the pressure for Santa in his uh, Santa costume or something. Yeah, he wants me to wear a bloody Santa costume. No, you know man. Brian Stover's fault. He started all the bloody rubbish off about wearing dressing up like Father Christmas. It ain't happening, folks. <laughs> Don't care what you say. Alan Saxton, compared to what the Studebaker looks like, looked like originally. It turned out pretty classy. I've always liked your silver on top of maroon. And the white looks good with the white wall tires as well. Very nice indeed. Thanks for the shout out at the beginning of each video. And um, we, all, we all enjoy it. I've got to itch. I've got to have a shave again because it starts itching after a while. So Brian, I'm not going to grow this for Santa. So I don't think I am. Um, Ian Hulley, great great guy this. He, he's a nice chap. He sent me loads of stuff. It's unbelievable what he sent me. Hi right, Bob, yeah, another masterpiece. In paint, your makeovers are truly riveting. Two-tone paint looks great on the map, or just like an American Hillman mix. I've, I've never seen one of them. I don't know. Keep me up in chatting, please. Commenters out there, please subscribe to the Dumpture Man with the magic spray can. Um, yeah, come on, guys! All, the, all you people that watches without subscriptions, hit the button. Give me, get me up over the two thousand. Let's see, how, let's see how far we can get it. Um, be a nice Christmas present for me, that would. Keith Orton, love your work you do. Well, Bob, done it again. Your colour combination is stunning. And the pearlescent is really high caption. Yes, it is. Pearlescent paint is a nice paint to use. Um, he likes the white wall tires and, and the rivet tip. Yeah, because I've done... I did have a video back along showing you how to do... Make the rivets look old. But I've improved... An e I've done it an easier way now, so I'll put that in the video as well. Keep on yakking. Um, yeah, I will. <laughs> I'll try to. Uh, Dennis Wood. Bob, you, sir, are one down to earth person. Love your commentary while you do your magic. You're the. What was it? You're the real deal. <laughs> um, thanks, Dennis. Um, Alan Trace. Oh, he's talking about the, the Volkswagen Safari. He's on about the little pin under the. When you um, put them back together, you've got this little round thing that goes in where the engine. Or not the engine. In the front of the bonnet where it comes through where next to the boots but i've never known what it's for and apparently what when you've got a car back together it, it's awkward to get the, the bonnet open isn't it because you can't get your fingers in there to get under the what you do you push down on, on that side the left hand side of the suspension and then that little pin pops the bonnet up a little bit so you can open it up i didn't know that so thanks alan for telling me that because i mean I, i've been wondering for ages every everyone i've done I thought, what's this bloody pin? What's the use of this pin? I think I said it in the video. I said, I, I don't know what the point of this pin is. Okay, but, well, there we know. So, thanks, Alan, again for that. James, Frank, Z Zach. Miss watching the Thunderbird series. I wish they could bring them back on telly. Yeah, they ought to bring them back, really, for all the youngsters, you know, like this sort of era, shouldn't it? or this um, sort of generation, really, instead of all this computer-generated rubbish, like, you know, what they put on there. Get the real, you know, Thunderbirds back. That's what they would do. Because it's all been remastered anyway, I'm sure. It has all these series like Captain Scarlet. 
they remasters it, don't they? Like computer remasters it. And they try to hide the wires away when they do that, but they, I think it should leave them in there. It's, it's more original, isn't it? You know? Anyway, that's, we're well, not talking about that anyway. But I wish they would do that for, for this, for the um, young generation these days. Scale model car guard channel. Keep, keep up the work, brother. Simply amazing. Cracking job as always. Funky. Thanks, mate. Um, Gaza P. Oh, Gaza P. Gary. I'm doing, this is the video I'm doing your, to your cars you sent me. I think I had the early version when he was, when he was a kid. I'm sure mine was green with the yellow sub. Um, great vid. Like the chat. Watch the videos without any chat and they aren't much fun, so keep chatting. I will. <laughs> Ricardo Kim, you are master. Thanks, Ricardo. Stephen Deere, fantastic work as always, Bob. Keep it up, mate. Cheers, Steve. Uh, Mana, whoa, a round of applause, fella. I love your paintwork. Puts all the other YouTubers to shame. Well, I, I don't know. I've never really seen a close up of an airbrushed, um, you know, model, really, so I don't. But I, I, I can't see it beating the old spray cans. Because I've watched people doing this um, airbrushing and, and it don't seem there's already any paint coming out sometimes. And they're, going, they're spraying in the same spot for so long. You can't do that with, with a spray can. You'd have a bloody great run down it if you'd done that. The amount that comes out of a spray can, you've got to... Like that, you know. Paul Osman. Bob, love what you do. Keep keep it going. Sod the ones that don't like it. Yes, yeah, sod them. <laughs> I use spray cans and my rest. There's no problem at all. I can't get your email address. Because he ain't got a computer, he only got a tablet. So what he done, he sent me his email address on the um, messages anyway. So he said he watches um, watches me on TV. It's like being in the shed with me. <laughs> if you wouldn't get near with me, mate. There's not much, not much room in here. But you could you could stand in the corner, I suppose. But yeah, I see what you mean. Can you send me your? Yeah, well, I've done all that now, mate. So we're all right now with that. He wants to send me something. Um, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's a car, a car transport or something he wants to send me because he's he's done one himself and he, he's getting another one. He wants to know if he uh, if I want it so I can um, have a go at it on the channel. So I mean I'll have a go at anything, you know. I'll try anything. <laughs> every every different one I am done is a bit more knowledge for me as well, like you know. So it all helps. Robert Garrett, this rest is fantastic. Love the colours, and that includes the interior too. Not forgetting the finishing touch of the white wall tires. Great stuff. As usual, looking forward to the next video, Rob. Cheers, mate. Rap W. In the nicest possible way, <laughs> the way I, the way I says some things reminds him of Wires of Gummage. <laughs> John Partway, remember that with the Dolly clothes peg? <laughs> Years ago, that was on that. <laughs> yeah, I suppose because I because he talks like Damshire type talk to Somerset. I suppose, doesn't it? I suppose, yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> say more about that. <laughs> um, Chris Wilkins, hi Bob. Only just come across your channel. Excellent stuff. As a corgi collector, I subscribe instantly. Well done. Keep it up, Chris. Well, thanks, Chris. And that's what I want. All you other people that watches and who are not subscribed, do it. Come on, hit the button, please. Get me up over the old two thousand. <laughs> anyway, that's um, that's enough of that. Um, I'm rattling on again now. I'm getting up with this bloody hat on. I'm sweating here, but... <laughs> um, anyway, let's get on and do this um, video now. It's uh, Gary Gazapi, as he's known on YouTube, sent me these models. Um, it's a couple of dinky models, and I think you'll like this video. So let's get on with it now. <laughs> Adios for now. Okay, here we go. Double restoration. Um, we've got the um, Dinky Triumph Vitesse number 134, I think it is, and the um, Dinky Triumph Spitfire. Both of these were sent by um, Gary, or Gaza P, that's known on YouTube, from Birmingham. And, um, well, I'm going to try my best with them. No glass in the Vitesse, no, that, well, the glass is broken on the Spitfire, there's no um, driver figure. The seatbelt is present, I have took that out, and um, really just needs a good clean up and a good bloody, well, new respray. So anyway, let's get on with these two and see how far we go. Well, 
Well, as you can see today, lovely people, this is what we're going to do. And these here, as I said previously in the old turntable shot, the two dinkies. Um, and they're sent from a nice guy from Birmingham called Gary Gaza P, as known on YouTube. And um, he sent me these, well, quite a while back now, I suppose, three weeks ago. And I thought, I've been waiting for parts for them, and I thought, well, about time they um, were done. I've got the parts sitting here from, so. Like, the, the, with this one here, I only needed a screen and some tyres. Whereas this one, it, it's got the seat belt with it. I've already had it apart. I've had both of these apart because I've, I've tapped them. And um, all this one's missing, really, the, the Spitfire, is the tyres and the screen, obviously, and the. Um, the driver but as you can see I've got them bits now so we can um, smarten these two cars up the seat belt I took out and I put it in there for safekeeping because and the steering wheel the steering wheel wasn't originally missing I've got that as well I've, I've put that in there but this is a funny old thing here when I took this one apart, let's take it apart again now because we're gonna we're gonna sort these out now. So I get the old screws out of here a minute, and I'll show you what I mean. I've never come across this before. Man, I'm not a dinky person really like that. I do like to do dinkies if I get the chance, but I am sort of done hundreds of them if, if you know what I mean. So. I don't really know all the different ways they do these things, but that there just that just comes off when you take that apart. So it just it just slots in there, in there like it's like a couple of teeth, like a couple of jewels, and there is a couple of little rubber pieces that go in there as well. I took them out and put them in the bag because I thought, well, they're going they're going to get lost. They're easy to miss, but if you I expect you've already noticed <laughs> the seating. <laughs> And the dash, it's all part of the actual molding, which is strange. I thought I'd never come across anything like that. It's all in one piece, that. It's all molded in one piece. You got the dash there, that it goes up inside, and it? it's all just molded in one piece. So when this gets sprayed, I'm going to, you know, have to hand paint all the inside here, like, you know, and the dash again, and all that stuff. But yeah, I thought, I've never seen nothing like that before. <laughs> there's where the, the old seat belt attaches and there's a little pin there like, and it just pushes over there and then pushes up through and then attaches in the back there, in the hole. But yeah, that's got to be stripped anyway. Got to strip all this. Base plate, that's got to be stripped. If it wasn't for that green on there, I might have left this base plate because it doesn't look in too bad neck. Then again, if I just, you know, I might be able to clean it up a bit actually. I don't know about stripping this one yet because it looks in very good neck. Might get away with um, not doing that one. I mean, the more original it is, the better really. So if I can get this paint off this green somehow, there's a good chance I could leave this base plate. Whether it's worth just giving it a flash over with a bit of um, undercoat and without stripping it, I don't know. Hard to see about that. Anyway, this one here, this one never had no glass. It's a Triumph Herald. Um, the Vitesse was well, it's like a Triumph Herald, isn't it? It's the same sort of model as a Herald. But they screwed it the way, man. Right, if I get the old screws out of here, there's nothing to this one really. That's why I thought I'd include it in the same video because it is nothing to it. I mean, it's there's no point dedicating a whole video to this one because it's there's only an easy sort of spray up and you know that's it really. A clean spray up and that's about it. But if you take that off, take this. I've, I've actually put a load of um. WD-40 on these because they were really they really seize these wheels and there's rust on them and everything that's got to be cleaned off but 
I mean that's going to get a dip anyway in the old cool stick and there's also a bit of sponge in here that to hold the seats up so that's gone in the bin but I will put, replace it with something else put another bit of sponge in or something there's the seats if you notice the seats are very shiny well I have dipped them in the old pledge I gave them a clean up while I had this apart and I dipped these seats in the pledge because they were a bit fragile and the pledge puts an extra coat on it as well and it stiffens them up slightly so if you've got any if you've got any of these um, crappy old interiors that come out of cars and they're a bit flimsy if you you know you're worried they might um, sort of split or anything then just dip them in the pledge and then that will um, toughen them up a bit it orange them up this one here I noticed I tried to bend a piece of this back and actually it is split I don't know where it is, on, on that side, on the front there's a very tiny down here, there's a, right along that line there's a very tiny split so I, I, I thought Jesus, I thought that nearly went so what I'm going to do is, is put a bit of um, super glue inside there when, I, when I've got this all cleaned off I'm going to put a bit of super glue along that split and sprinkle the old you know bicarbonate on top of that just to sort of you know make it a bit more sturdy if you know what I mean because I'm worried it's going to come apart else because it's very thin there I don't want the seal to, to break off so yeah I'm going to have to do that so anyway enough of the chatter let's get these things stripped and I'll I won't show you the stripping process because it's only the course accelerator again. You've seen it enough times. You must be fed up with it by now. <laughs> I shall um, get these stripped and cleaned up, polished up with my wheel, the old um, thing here, and um, yeah, we'll see what we will go from there then. Try all the bits out and get them all, you know, see how they fit back together, and then we can get them sprayed up and. Well, it's all done again, isn't it? Another, another complete restoration. But anyway, less I stop, more I stop start talking. I know you like me yap, but I do dribble on, so I'm going to stop me dribble now and get on and strip these and bring them back. So, see you in a minute. Okay, guys, I don't know if you can see this very clearly. This is the only angle really I can get this, so that I can cut it and. Um, try and show you as well but this here is a piece of the actual um, metal that goes in the bottom I'll show you that before I start it's a piece that rivets into this piece and it's suspension but I had this piece sent to me by the same guy Gary who sent the cars but it's slightly too wide for the actual car I'm putting it in so what I'm doing is trimming the edges off I've done one side I thought I'd show you, um, well, show off my new Dremel, really, <laughs> and just show you what I'm doing. So here we go. I might get a bit noisy, there might be a few sparks flying, but... I'll just get the guideline. Press the roll. I don't know if you can see that there, I've got like a little guideline there now. Just keep going over it. Reckon we're there, folks. So I'll just put that to one side now. There's, 
as you can see there's a piece there's a piece I've cut off now all I've got to do is um, grind that piece smooth just to take the edges off of it I know it ain't going to really matter because it's going into a there it's a lot thinner now I've done one side like I said but that's a lot thinner than what it was it should fit in the actual it wouldn't fit between here but look as you can see now it fits in there so that's that little job done I'll get that grown down and I can get a little pot rivet in there and we'll have new suspension for the actual for, for test now I've given this a, a nice polish up now I've done the edges of it I've cleaned all these edges off so they're not so sharp so now this fits this little model perfectly if I put that up there I might cut that old piece off there that because it's not really doing anything but if you look the, look the little O lines up with the base plate and we've got suspension back in there so there you go all I need is a little tiny pot rivet to go in there I'm, I've got a mate across across the um, road he's got a pot rivet there. I know it's something I should get, but I think he said he's going to dig a spare one out for me, so that would be another tool to add to the shed. But for now, I'll use the spare one he said he got. But there's where the roots come through. Look, there's that little tab there. I'm going to cut that little piece off because this here is from another car. So, But, you know, it's coming handy. It's, seeing the piece was missing from this one, that's all I had. So it's... um. It's coming handy. So anyway, I'm going to get this all this stuff undercoated now. All these I've got all these shelves all cleaned up, as you can see. And um, I'm going to get it all um, get it all undercoated, and then we'll start putting some colour on. So let's get on and do that. Okay, guys, as you see, <clears throat> I've um, undercoated all these now. Now what I'm going to do with the seating in this, I was going to hand paint it, and I thought, well. There's no reason to really. I, I could spray that bit and then mask the rest of the car off. Well, mask that piece off when I've finished and um, spray the rest of the car afterwards because I think that's how they might have done it, you know, when they actually done these. So, anyway, let's have a go. I'm going to do it beige, the seating, the seating part. So, I've got a nice Ford beige here. I'll give it all a nice trying to open belly thing here. A nice squirt inside. Plus you'll get a better finish from spray anyway. It's gonna It's gonna finish off better than what it would do with the hand painting it. Well that ain't too bad actually. I might have to go over it again because as you see the, the seats are showing a few a few lines in there, so I'll let that dry. And I should give that another um, quick blast or two, and um, let that dry properly, and then I'll mask off the seating area, and then do the, you know, do the red on it. I'm going to do it a red actually. This one, put it, put it back to a red colour. So anyway, that's that one. That's that bit done. Okay, so the Vitesse. I decided to do this one. It's a funny old blue. This is um, nothing. See that Vauxhall Caribbean blue metallic. It's a, it's a very funny old blue. This I have seen some similar to this colour on the old internet. So I'm going to do this this colour and um, put the old white stripe. on there afterwards. So I'll let that one go. 
don't want to put too much on at once. There's a funny old paint display, this one. If I put too much on, it's liable to bloody end up with a load of um, runs. We don't want that. At the moment, it looks alright. So that's that part done. Okay, so I've got the bonnet. I can do that red. No need me to uh, worry about needing to mask any of this off because this is just one colour anyway. So that'll do that. Look at the shine on that. Beautiful. Can't beat these car spray paints for this. For this um, Restoration lock, the, the old corgis and dinkies and whatever and matchbox. You can't beat the old spray paint. Not the, you know, the old spray paints. I think it comes out bloody beautiful. Anyway, that's that bit done. So, last thing is just a base plate for that other, um, the old dinky Vitesse. Right. I'm not bored about the the inside bit so much. This is the inside here. I'll just cover as much of that as I can. I'm not really bored about that bit. Because you're not going to see that anyway. This is a bit I'm going to do really nice. And all I'm doing on this is a matte black coat at the moment. So that'll do for that. And then once I... Um, do that with a satin, I'm going to go over that with a satin black, that'll be finishing, and all I've got to do is pop rivet that piece of um, flat suspension metal in. Okay, <clears throat> I'll give this chance to dry, all I've got to do now is going to mask this car off, because I want to do the white stripe in the middle there, I'm not going to do the boot or the roof, I'm going to just do, because there is some with just a stripe going down the side, so I'm going to do that. Get that sprayed on there. This one, I've got to um, mask off all this seating area and dash and spray this one red. Also, while I'm at it, I'll give the uh, bonnet another um, flash over as well. I could do with another coat. And then um, all I've got to do then is start detailing it. There's the old bonnet, goes in there like that. Somehow, there like that. And um, get the detail in the rest of it, put the engine on there, and um, then we'll start putting them back together. So I'll get on and sort that out now. Okay, guys, as you can see, I've um, took the masking tape off now, and it's all been, you know, touched up inside. I've got the steering wheel back in, even steers that. Painted up with chrome on the engine. So, um, well, I am, I am done the back lights properly yet, but I'll do that before the turntable bit comes up. So all we've got to do now is put this one back together. And um, I've got my bits here, and my bag, my spares, what I bought. So let's um, see what we got. Oh, I nearly lost a little rubber bit then. There's a two little bits of rubber I was on about. And what they do... Oh, let me lost it again. Is they sit in the bottom of there. On either side. They just sit in there. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know what they're for, actually. It's, it's a strange little thing to have in there, but... I don't know, I suppose it cushions it. Slightly, I suppose. I don't know. But they just sit in there like that. So when you're taking one of these apart, just be aware that you've got this um, little rubber piece that goes in the actual bottom. I've done... I've, I cleaned these up with, with my Dremel, these wheels. I mean, look at them wheels. Up. Look at the shine on them. They came up beautiful. They're like mirrors. I couldn't believe how that came up. That's for that metal polish stuff. Right, seat belt. The seat belt goes 
hooks onto that little piece there. There's a little tab there, that. Now, I think this is going to be a bit of a pig to get on. Because it was a bit of a pig to get off, to tell you the truth. So I'll put the end of it through there first. But you never know, it might go on easier than will it come off. Now, I'll get my little tweezers and try and push that down over the... See, I've got to remember this has been painted now and it might not go on so easy. Oh, I don't know. It ain't too bad. Oh, it's gone on like that. Honestly, I thought I was going to have problems with that. But, there you go. Sometimes, you can get surprised. So that goes on like that. <clears throat> and there's the old belt. Uh, the little woman figure, it's not the best of figures, it's only a Reaper one from Flowers. It's not brilliant, it looks like a faceless wonder, that. I mean, there's no face to it, that. But that sits in there, it's better than nothing. And then you put your, put your little seat belt round like that. And just push that in the O. Being careful not to um, slip and damage the paint. That's what I'm resorting to oh there's any in there anyway that push it down like that and there's she's sat in with her seatbelt so that's her secure so she won't go she won't be going anywhere now the windscreen this has been treated with the um <coughs> the old what do you call it the pledge that just slots in there so that should just clip in with no problems hopefully but you know sometimes I did what well, I did <laughs> sometimes it doesn't click in does it sometimes you get problems but that's all that put back so the only other bit really is the old front that's got to go on there. Look it under the thing like that. Turn it over. If we get our screws out. I've got the screws in this still. Get them out. Put them there. See, I'm never prepared. I should have had all this out, really. Before I showed you lot, I never prepare as nothing. I just do it. There. Who cares? These wheels come out pretty easy. They just flip out over the. You can take these axles right out. You just pull that up a bit, the old thing, and they just flip out over the. What do you, what do you call it? They come out very easy. The the wheels and axles. Then we put put the old bottom back on let's clip the back part down now this is the part with the actual don't forget you got that rubber bit in there but it goes it does go back in pretty easy I did actually um, flash a base plate over I didn't strip it I roughed it up with a bit of emery paper and just flashed it over and then lacquered it, so it didn't really need didn't really need stripping actually, because the actual coat that was on it was pretty good. There was only them all three places, so I thought it would save a bit of work. I mean, I could have stripped it, you know, because the wheels and the axles were out, so I could have stripped it. But I thought, what's the point? It sprayed over nice anyway, and it came out all right, so. But why make work if you don't need to? <laughs> no point. There. That's all put back together. I've got my new tyres on it, as you can see. All on up. Nice little click. And there's the... Um, 134, is it? Or 114, is it? I'm not sure now. 114. Try and spit fire. That's that one finished. 
Now this one, I'm going to have to um, put this together. I am, I am got this base plate done yet, but I will do it. So I'm going to leave this one for now. I'm not going to bother putting this one together because I want to show you how to. Um, well, you probably know how to work a, a bloody, um, you know, pot river, but I'd rather let you see it. The process. So I'm going to pop. That's going to be pop riveted in. I'm hoping it's going to work. Cause I don't know if it's going to work myself. Really, it should do. I mean, pop river. You should be able to get through there and just pin that one on. But you know, I'm going to leave it for now. I've got that ready, and I've got me. I've got a bit of sponge as well. Look, a new bit of sponge to put on top of it to hold the old um, seating and the um, roof in. But anyway, the next scene, there's the old bit. That can go in the bin actually. Don't need that. I'll just put it there just so you can see for now. Oh I can't because I've got the screws in it. Well anyway, the next bit I'm gonna be um putting that one together quickly. But in the meantime I'm gonna paint the lights on them. So when I come back that one will obviously be finished. This one here will have the lights been been done. Okay, right. I've um, now got this thing here, the pop riveter, what my mate said I could have. And I've got a couple of little rivers. I've only got two of these. So, I've never used one of these before, so I'm hoping I'm going to not balls it up. So, if we put that there like that, yeah, that all fits all right like that, you see. Now, what he told me is you put the old rivet in the bottom there, like that. And you've got to have this open. It's got to be open like that, right. I'm trying to do this so you can see. And you push it over. And then you've got to gradually close it. This is going to be the awkward bit now, folks. I'll do it there on the thing. I can hold it with my finger. And then you gradually squeeze squeeze this together. You see, that might take a couple pumps. There's one. I'm trying to squeeze it again done it. Well, I'll tell you what that ain't bad done it I'm put the old piece of an axle there look keep that spare axle and if you look at that that's pretty good so now we've got suspension Nice one. I know you got the little bit there, but I don't think there's a lot really you can do about that. But the sponge is going to um, see to that anyway, that because we need the sponge for um, putting our um, putting the seats in and holding the seats up. So we'll need the sponge for that. Right, let's do that now. So we put our little seats in there, and the, and the glass. Let's get the glass. Oh, perhaps if I put it the correct way round, like that, <laughs> then perhaps it might go in better. Well, you put the glass in like that. Well, it's not quite in there now. I have tried this glass and it did fit in there because I had to um, how did it go in again yeah that's right yeah it went over that rivet that's right 
and this is a repo glass that's it now he's clicking in there that's the trouble folks and at least oh bugger that's not very good what's happened here that if the old thing's broke I'm gonna have to repair that chaps I know a quick easy way to do that if I get me super glue because I ain't gonna mess around with this one too long well, that's why the glass won't go in I don't know what what's happened there but if I get me super glue and put a little dab on there I know it's gonna paintwork's gonna be a bit dubious on it I didn't really know that was going there I'll stick it on the glass as well I mean, when I sprayed this it seemed alright so that's a bit of a a bummer that happening like that but it ain't gonna beat me well, I'll push it into shape There, I've glued it back. I know there's a, a little split there. There's a split up there as well, by the looks of it. But you know, what can you do? What can you do? If it goes, it goes, doesn't it? There's nothing you can really do about it. I'm not going to go stripping all this again just for that little bit now. I've glued it onto the actual glass anyway, so that'll hold it. So carry on. Put our seats in. Get our screws out in a minute. I'll stick them in afterwards. I've got two odd ones here. I've got a straight one and a bloody a Phillips one. But I will I will put two the same when I get some more. That's the only two I've got. Right then, put the old stuff there get the old base plate on and put the screws back yeah it's a bit peeved with that there then that breaking like that I didn't expect that to bloody go like that but you know Things are sent to try us, so they can try me, but it ain't gonna bloody beat me, I tell ya. Screw this one back. I'm happy that rivet worked anyway. At least that part worked. There we go. Suspension fixed. Now I've got to get some of these rivets. This is the only one I've got because that's a nice little um, nice little toy to have this thing. The little pop rivet there. That means in the future any dinkies I get, I can take the um, take the actual um, piece off the bottom and re-rivet it afterwards. So that's an improvement on that. Right, there they go. That's the two cars. We'll just take a look on the turntable now and see what we got. Well, as you must remember, this is what we started off with. A couple of scruffy looking, looking little um, dinkies. <clears throat> the Triumph for test, no glass, no tires. Well, pretty rough, really. And um, the old Spitfire there, looking a bit sorry for itself. No screen, no um, driver. The steering wheel was present, I just took it out before I shot this. No tyres. So anyway, they're both ideal candidates for uh, restoration, really. Needed brightening up. So um, anyway, after the old um, magic was um, worked on on both, this is what we ended up with. What a difference. There you go. Spitfire's back to its nice red with the beige interior. The driver's back. New screen. 
new tyres, nice bit of detailing, a Neo Triumph Vitesse, nice coat of um, dark metallic blue with a white stripe down the side, nice bit of detailing as well, new glass and that and new tyres, even the suspension was all repaired because there wasn't no suspension plate in it, that got repaired and um, yeah, they've come out pretty good. So um, anyway, if you um, enjoyed this video and um, you'd like to see more then tune in again next week. Hopefully I'll have a little up by then. But in the meantime, get all your friends to, to like, share and